Wow, today is already the 24th day of December. No hurricane in my district of Dundestan. The lights have not been turned on. The water have not yet been turned on. But this is a Christmas Eve message for those who dare listen. And it goes though to members of the armed forces, the police force and the defense force. And the government is wondering why Shane Gibson couldn't get a conviction. You see, if I was in the jury box, I would have voted the same way because of the way the evidence was collected by the government illegally. And you imagine you're giving a woman <laughs> a contract while a case is going on to testify in their way. Uh, members of the public has been more educated than ever before because of the stuff that I do through social media. What I do is try to give information, not down to downplay. It is the way Kai see it in this country of the Bahamas. I was born in 1961 in this country. And when I speak, I don't speak by what nobody tell me. I speak by CSA, not HSA. And this is goes out to, like I said in the beginning, the police force, the defense force. Remember, people like Commander Simmons and uh, Mortimer, Marshall Police Station, that one day Kai Mills would also sit on a jury. You see, the judge is just the referee when you have a jury, jury trial. And just like the Shane Gibson case, the people remember how brutal, how corrupt the government institution are. There's an article that came out in the Tribune a few months before the hurricane and saying the police force and the defense force is the most corrupt industry in the country. I know of defense force officers that got millions off the coke trade. They would bring in the cocaine in their um, pillowcase and smuggle the drugs that they're supposed to destroy, and they would bring it in and sell it to the drug dealers. We all know of that. We know all about the corruption. You did a background check on how they live in, the homes they're in, do the math and see if how they live in correspond with their salary. It's an easy equation. I love in America, when they can't explain how they get it, they take it from them. But you imagine me on the jury with Commander Simmons or Mortimer. How am I going to rule against any citizen that these brutes bring before the courts. I remember what they did to me. I remember what they're continually doing to me to try to shut me up. You imagine just two days ago, I'm in Abaco, and the little non-ranking defense force officer is going to push me in my chest as an elected man. I am elected and have been elected for four terms in the Dundas Town Town Committee. I also never get more than first or second in the vote getting. But yet, they try to stop me from coming to a public meeting. And then when I came back the second time, a higher ranking officer is going to say to Kai Mills, behave yourself. When there's 200 Haitians there, met them there, sitting down, a U.S. reporter came in with me, said nothing to her, but a big grown man that is elected in the district that he knows nothing about. I was born in Dundestan, and he's going to tell me I must behave myself because Darren Henfield is coming to act as if it is his giveaway. That is unacceptable. So the message to 
these law enforcement officers, you're wondering why when you do your work and you put these people before the courts and the jury trial is taking place, why you can't get a conviction? Because the people that are in the jury remember what you did to them, their loved ones, their family, and the corruption that is stinking and ain't changing. And in my district of Abaco right now, there is more corruption happen than I've ever seen in my birthplace. And persons of the armed forces think they have the right to be corrupt. Just want to end this. And this one was mind-boggling to me. A white man, I assume he's Bohemian, got up in a meeting cursing. This guy cursing. You imagine Kai getting in a public meeting with the minister and cussing profanity and bring an allegation of theft, uh, uh, corruption into this meeting. And the same thing that he was saying, I was saying without the profanity, how I was harassed, sexually assaulted by our armed forces as an elected person in Abaco after going through a Category 5 hurricane. My defense force sexually harassed me, took away from my movement, my constitutional right, and they, they, are, they are laughing. If they're doing their job, fine. But when I see my defense force officers sexually intimidating, harassing me, and laughing, that is unacceptable. The prime minister also know about that, you know. He know about the girl that video the police um, going in her mother's house, and when she cameraed up, they just took off, don't want to be on camera. He knows about the guy in Abaco that has a house off the highway, and the police inside his house taking his fridge and his stove. He recorded it, but when he took it into the police, they locked him and his wife up and said to them, they have to give a receipt of how they got a fridge and stove off the highway. Obviously, a police knew they were there, know the stuff was there, but he wanted this for his family. So to add injury to insult, after the guy cameraed up with it, I asked him to give me a video, but he preferred to carry it to his lawyer. You got to put this stuff out there. So he carried it to the police. The policeman immediately locked him up. He had to come to Nassau to get a lawyer to get his stuff back. Those stuff is happening in Abaco by the black majority. And guess what? Not a word from no law enforcement, not a word from our prime minister. But this white Caucasian man came in a meeting and cursed in the meeting. And immediately, the prime minister had a press conference and said he has ordered the commissioner of police to do an investigation for this white boy in the Bahamas. But when the black man is sexually harassed, intimidated, insulted as an elected person in Dundas Town, nothing from the prime minister. It reminds me of that, the slave days. Once you're white, you're right. Once you're black, you suck it up, Kai. You deal with it. But as prime minister, I'm going to make sure that that white boy don't go through what he is saying happen. But when Kai Mills report and the other blacks report of what happened in Abaco, I don't know if this white boy has went through a Category 5 hurricane. We have went through a Category 5 hurricane and still is being harassed by the armed forces in Abaco, but our illustrious prime minister haven't come to camera and say he's going to order an investigation against what's happening to the Negroes. But when a pure white boy could use profanity in a meeting, immediately the next day, our prime minister order an investigation, immediately investigate that this lily white boy don't go through this again. And he has not been through a hurricane. And he said he's spending Christmas in Abaco. 
when the word came out that the Prime Minister of the Bahamas was spending Christmas in Abaco, everybody went to the airport and booked a flight, and they had 50 in line want to get the hell out of Abaco because we don't want to be anywhere where the right honorable Prime Minister is spending Christmas because what he have done and have not done for Abaconians four months in, it's unacceptable. And you go along party lines and the ones in Nassau that think they know or how we feel. You know what it is not to have a home to go back to at Christmas, not to have loved ones to lost loved ones, not to have electricity. You can't take a shower in Abaco in my district. No water, no light. You can't see television. Four months in, seven million has been spent on the Haitian community and not a hundred thousand dollars worth of plywood has been brought into Abaco. Yet, where Darren Henfield went to try to fool the public like he was giving out toys, there is a hundred sheets of plywood, over a hundred sheet of ice water shield in the same district, in the same building where they're giving out them little toys. What are they going to do with the toys when they don't have no place to put the toys? That is my Christmas message. That is my Christmas prayer that the government of the Bahamas would put Bahamians first. They said it is the people's time, but obvious it was not the people that elected them. It is the people that lived in the mud that are getting first preference, first attention from the government of the Bahamas. That is not a good Christmas present for Abaconians. Y'all go ahead and celebrate Christmas. That's off my calendar for this year and next year. My main thing is to get something simple. My own pillow. My own door. My own key. My own television. My own bed. That is what I want for Christmas. And if you leave for the government of the Bahamas to assist you, woe be unto you. Merry Christmas to those who dare celebrate it. I don't like Christmas. It's just a waste of money.